Amen. Numbers 31 through 33. So, we see some interesting things in here, some tough things, but... Uh, a lot of killing. A lot of killing. A lot so, of burning. <laughs> so I pulled uh, two extra articles today about explaining the Holy War. Um, and to get a different perspective, I have one liberal perspective by uh, Professor Scott Knight and then one conservative perspective. So you can kind of see where everybody stands. Um, so verse 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the Israelites. After that, you will be gathered to your people. So God's telling Moses, This is the last thing you're going to do. Get your people ready for war, and then I'm going to take you home. Now, uh, this is where the idea of holy war comes from. Because God is trying to protect his people. He knows what's going to happen if he doesn't get rid of the pagans. We've, we saw earlier on that the men couldn't control themselves. They took pagan wives, and all of a sudden they started following pagan gods. And it didn't work out too well for them. Now, uh, when we look at verse 2, we're told in Numbers 25 that the Israelites should destroy the Midianites. Now, the Hebrew word for destroy means to completely get rid of, just like the sacrifice. We're told that the entire item has to be burned up, has to be used up. Same thing with the word destroy. What, so what God's saying is, I know these people. They're not going to repent. They're going to drag you down with them. So here's what you have to do. So God tells us in, in Numbers 25, Attack the Midianites and destroy them, because they assaulted you with deceit and tricked you into worshiping Baal of Peor, and because of Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite leader who was killed at the time of the plague because of what happened in Peor. To us, we look at this and we say, how could God allow this to happen? Why does God tell the Israelites to completely wipe out these people? Well, and then once they get moved over and they bring the children and women, they want the boys killed. I don't understand that. Well, because these are these are the soldiers. Mm -hmm. But boys. But these people are the ones that are they've been raised as soldiers. Okay. They've been uh, indoctrinated. Oh, or even even if they're young, they'll grow up with vengeance. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, to to us, to us it seems like a difficult thing. Did he? But we know that it's it's almost impossible to, to rehab somebody um, if they've been brought up with this. And like I said, God has his complete wisdom. He knows everything from start to finish. And he knows how these people are going to end up. And he knows what would happen to the Israelites if they allow these people to, to move in. So to <laughs> us it seems harsh, but God is doing it for the good of his people. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Nebuchadnezzar trying to brainwash uh, Meshach, Meshach, Bendigo, and Daniel. Right, right. Uh, here's, all, here's all the good food, all the fatty food, all the drink you can want. Mm -hmm. God says, no, let my people have this diet. And, and if it works out, then maybe you'll, you'll change your mind. And he did. That yeah, was a good class. Hmm? That was a good class I did on that one. I like yeah. that. I did, it was a whole story. I was like, whoa, this is really cool. So. Better to kill them to bring, or kill them than to bring worship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they were the healthy-looking ones mm -hmm. and in good shape and smart. It helped their brains too. So. Also, it's 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 a different way different today that um it was then because then um God wiped them out the evil, but today when um today we have a chance, you know, through the evil people have a chance through Jesus to repent, mm -hmm. and turn yep. from them sins. Right. So it's yep. way different. So we are. Blessed. Yes. <laughs> we are truly blessed. <coughs> yeah. We got the chance. Mm -hmm. So Moses said to the people, Arm some of your men to go to war against the Midianites so that they may carry out the Lord's vengeance on them. Send into battle a thousand men from each tribe. And then we get to verse 6. Moses sent them into battle a thousand from each tribe, along with Phinehas, son of Eleazar. Now Phinehas was, was selected 
as the as the priest because of his actions back in, in Numbers 25. Uh, verses 6 through 18, uh, specifically verse 7. When Phinehas son of Eleazar and the grandson of Aaron the priest saw this, he saw that they had one um, Hebrew marched his Midianite wife into the camp right past Moses. So Phinehas saw that and he had the righteous anger of God. Remember, anything that makes God angry, it's justifiable anger. So Phinehas, uh, son of Eleazar, grandson of Aaron, the priest, saw this. He jumped up, left the assembly, took a spear, and rushed after the man into his tent. And then Phinehas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and the woman's body, so the plague against the Israelites was stopped. So because Phinehas took this action in defense of God, God declared that he would be the priest that would take the um, Israelites into battle, lead them morning. into battle. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Sorry. Uh, no problem. Was he the high priest then? Uh, Probably not I, because no, he didn't do a killing. Right. Eleazar is the high priest. Remember when Aaron okay. was, was dying, they publicly took Aaron's uh, priestly robes mm -hmm. and put them on Eleazar. So that kind of sets a pattern about priests going to war with the tribes. Right. Too. Yep. And of course, the high priest couldn't be around dead, the, dead, pit, death. The dead bodies. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, he would be uh, unclean. I was listening to it this morning on my phone. <laughs> I was in the shower going, really? And I'm washing my hair going, this is surprising. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so they, uh, verse 7, they fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Among their victims were the leaders. Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, son of yes. Nor. This is our famous priest. Yes, that's, when I heard that I was surprised. I was like, oh, he's dead. He finally gets his comeback. He yeah, finally gets his comeback. Yeah. Right. Given the plan to seduce the... Uh, Israelites. He wasn't he the one who sent the women in to he try to seduce the men? Him, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because he couldn't do it. But God, then God talked through him, yeah. and. Well, I'll talk through his donkey. Yeah, that's right. It was the do talking donkey. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that one. Okay. Wasn't there a movie like that in the fifties? Yeah, we did. Talking donkey. Francis. Francis. Oh, the, talk, the speaking, the talking mule. And he goes to college too. Oh yeah, he was a smart donkey. Kind of nice and the mule. Uh, had a curved time where we couldn't say anything bad about God's people. So there's a little footnote, footnote number four. This is the same Balaam, the sorcerer, who told the Midianite women to seduce the Israelite men in Numbers 25. Numbers 25. So he finally got his comeuppance. Yes. So let's see. Moses, Eleazar, the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet, the, meet them outside the camp when the soldiers came back. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of the thousands, the commanders of the hundreds who returned from the battle. And then Moses says, Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. They were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the pure incident. So Moses knows, he says, we stand a chance of falling back into the same trouble we had before. And you, why did you let this happen? You had your instructions. Excuse me, Pastor. Yes. Where are we at? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're in Numbers 31. We're now in verse 15. Oh, uh, the, the handouts I gave you, those are just the footnotes. Oh. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, I'll... Got it. There you go. Oh, confused. So... Oh. What? She said we're all confused. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, stop me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll stop. I'm okay, so, so the handouts I give you guys, um, they're, they're my notes that I come up with as I'm going through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And then things that trouble me, I look for um, extra explanations. Okay. So we have two handouts about holy war because holy war is a very, for us, is a very difficult concept. You know, we're, we're so anti-war, rightly so, because... Thou shalt not kill. Or murder. Murder. There you go. Let's Sorry. remember that. It's murder, <laughs> not kill. So, 
because to to us, what happens is when there's a war, we send our young men and women off to get killed, and nobody wins. But in this case, God has a good reason for a holy war, and as we'll see as as we read through today's readings, God's first option is chase the people out, get the get the pagan people out first. If they don't leave, they're going to tempt you. So then we have to have the holy war. Now, is this the same holy wars that will go on through centuries for like oh, the churches will no. fight? Uh, no, That's no, no, a no, different no. type let's, of holy let's war. Let's not confuse the crusades with holy ah, war. Ah, crusades. Okay. 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 The crusades were a money-making venture. Okay. 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 Now, th there were some cases where where um, the Muslims did attack uh, did attack Christian camps and Christian peoples, and those were not quite a holy war because God didn't declare war okay. on these people, but they were defending themselves. So crusades were the way they went out and plundered and got money for the church. In a lot of the cases. Okay. Right. Different. All right. So yeah, <coughs> the only time there's a holy war is when God says we have to do this okay. to, preserve, to preserve the faith. Okay, and that's why we have those handouts. Um, we have two handouts about holy war. There's one from uh, a liberal perspective, and there's one from a conservative perspective. So we get both sides of the, <coughs> of the issue. I thought it was kind of interesting that sometimes they were killed. In one case, they used a spear to wipe out uh, an unfaithful man, and this time they used a sword on uh, Balaam. Yeah. By specifics. I don't know. That's a that's, that's <laughs> research. So here, they they took plunder, and we see this in another instance in the Bible where you're not supposed to take plunder. Right. When when God says um, you have to destroy, the Hebrew word for destroy means um, complete surrender of something to God. So you think of the sacrifice where they had to burn up the entire sacrifice. This would be the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a complete giving over of something to God. And you don't take anything for yourself. So in this case, God told them, you have to get rid of everything. Because if you don't, they're going to come and seduce you. They're going to switch you over. Because I've seen God says, I've seen it before. <laughs> you guys are just too weak. <laughs> and I do mean... <coughs> The men were too weak. <laughs> the Midianite women must have been awesome. They must have been <laughs> I'll tell you. They must have been something. Or they knew something that the they, Israelite women did not know. They, they must have been something because those guys just <clears throat> fell all over themselves. They sinned and you know where that goes. They smelled nice. They weren't in the desert for 40 years. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they had perfume and showers. Yeah. yeah. They were clean. <laughs> yep. So unfortunately, we, we, we get to verse 17, and we say, Now kill all the boys, and kill every woman who has slept with a man. So um, to us, this seems like a, a very harsh thing, to kill all the boys. But we had a discussion before, uh, a little bit earlier this morning, that the boys were, have already been raised in this, this militaristic attitude. They've already been raised with with the pagan religion, so God knows that they would probably seek vengeance for the, the death of their fathers. So they had to get rid of them. And kill every woman who, that, who has slept with a man. Same thing, these women might have an eye towards vengeance. They might say, well, you killed my husband, I'm going to take care of you. So if you were a virgin, you lived. Right. Virgins to the right. Poor, uh, others, to uh, others who have slept around to the left. <laughs> right. kind of a, a government mess. Yeah, I, I, I would think how, never, I'm, yeah. I'm not well, going there. The sorting out of that would be difficult, I think. You well, know? It, was, it was probably by age. Um, we saw also earlier in Bible 101 that um, married women usually had a ring in their nose or some other gold bands on their arms. Okay. Now, that might have been a, a Hebrew tradition. We don't know. We're not sure. But um, I think I remember from the footnotes that it was a tradition in that area 
that married women usually had gold bands on their arms and sometimes rings in their nose. Okay. Just something that they did. So they, they probably knew who was who. Okay. Um, maybe they asked. I don't know. That <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. if, you're fa if you're faced with a sword, you might make that decision. <laughs> now, um, we, we need to make a distinction that the, the virgins were, were brought, it says, brought into the family. So they were married. Now, it wasn't to take them as a second wife or a third wife. It was to take them as a first wife. So um, there are a couple commentaries that, that talked about rape. But if you look at the Hebrew words, it clearly says to bring into the family. So um, also we see in um, Deuteronomy verse 21, uh, chapter 21, verses 10 through 14, uh, we're told the rules. Suppose you go out to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God hands them over to you, and you take some of them as captives. And suppose you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and you are attracted to her and want to marry her. Marry her is the key mm -hmm. point. Uh, if this happens, you may take her to your home, where she must shave her head, now this is kind of weird, <laughs> shave her hair, head, her head, cut her nails, and change the clothes she was wearing when she was captured. She will stay in your home, but let her mourn for her father and mother for a full month. Then you may marry her, and then you will be her husband, and she will be your wife. That's kind of weird, wow. but okay. I don't want to get married. Well, <laughs> well, it's almost like they were their they were their property, mm -hmm. and they branded them. I'm sorry. Well, they didn't brand them. Where's Natalie today? I need Natalie. She's usually on my side. They, they, they cut her hair and cut her nails. Why? I don't know. Maybe they didn't want anything to be part of the old family. They wanted her to change completely to their way. Maybe. 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 Like maybe Jerry said, style. maybe it was for disease. Oh. And maybe was it God's way? This is this is what God told. This is what they told to do. do. Hmm. So it must be for some cleaning or so <laughs> something. Yeah. They, they had lice. Rid of the lice. Yeah. I don't know. Or they didn't want the lice. They just this was a precaution. Well, that's why you cut their hair. Yeah. Right to make sure yeah. it doesn't come into the camp. Yeah. Or right. it could be to strip them of their the pridefulness. Yeah. That could be. Oh. I mean, we don't know. We just know that God had a reason for it. Sure. Right. Okay. Being without hair, it probably takes a year to grow hair back. Oh, I don't Some know. Some people oh. never grow their hair back. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Yeah. Hair actually, actually hair I, grows, I do get the vel hair, Velcro on the sides. Yes. The yeah, average off. hair grows a, a, a half an inch a month. It grows about approximately six in inches a year. Wow, so that's not fast. Recognizable. I get my hair cut every... Yes, then my hair grows Some fast. Grow faster I'm on vitamins. Okay. So okay. But that's lots of vitamins we take. Right. So it's usually be no, no we're out of that. <laughs> yeah, I'd get married after my hair grew back, but okay. <laughs> well, it, but they wore their scarves on. Like, that's true. Yeah, they had their head covering, so maybe it was a bad thing to do. We don't know. <laughs> but that's what God tells us in Deuteronomy. Um, and then we get to verse 19, the purity law. Anyone who has killed somebody or touched someone who ha was killed must stay out of the camp for seven days. And that's that's for purity. Uh, whenever you kill some or kill somebody or touch a dead body, you've got to go outside the camp, get purified by the priest, then you can come back in. I wonder if that's for disease as well. Probably. Probably. Because I'm sure there was no refrigeration. It was warm. It was in the well, deserty yeah. kind of area. So, I mean, a no body... No ice cubes, no ice flows. Right. You would pretty much go yeah. start to decay right away. Yeah, with 12,000 yeah. troops going out there, being a yeah. uh, pretty quiet Yeah. Yeah. Camp. Yeah. Okay, Something so... Something my mother told me about. Um, when they used to have the... Where the people set up with the body overnight, I forgot what it's called. Like... The wake mm -hmm. and things. My mother told me that she remembers doing that for her grandfather. Sitting in the And wake. they did that because they didn't have the refrigeration and homes were not 
as varmint proof as they are now. They oh, stayed awake boy. to make sure the mice didn't, their rats didn't eat them. Oh, wow. oh, that's, that's, what the wake is. that's what the wake was for. Huh. To stay awake. Or to make sure they didn't wake up. That's very cut, <laughs> to stay awake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's someone clever. And watch, watch, make sure that no, nothing. Yeah. Sure. No or, animal or anything got it. Right. Or, or, or where they put coins on their eyes, yes. too, so the cats don't. Mm -hmm. Or to keep their eyes Ooh. shut sometimes. Well, we, I know cats, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they called the cat's eye. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow, oh, good, good point. <laughs> it could be. Well, we're it could rabbit, be. Hole. rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, it's, it's a rabbit hole that taught us yeah. something. Yeah. So, yeah, and thank goodness wakes are no longer three days long. Because mm -hmm. why don't we did were you guys kids. Have the tradition out here? Where wakes were three days long. Yeah, they no. still have it down south. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it was for us. That's what we had in the Chicago land area. Mm -hmm. Three day long wakes. They were awful, awful. Mm -hmm. So, at the funeral home. Good, yeah, at the funeral yes. home, but still three, three days. days. Yeah. Well, a lot of times they more than forty days for. Yeah. 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 So on verse twenty four. So there, if you touch somebody uh, that was dead or came near anybody, you're outside the camp. And then verse 24 tells us, On the seventh day, wash your clothes and you will be clean. Then you may come into the camp. And um, we, we heard before why this happens. is because God is all about life. And death is something that, that God just doesn't deal with. He brings us to everlasting life through Jesus. So this is the, one of the first um, cases in God saying that I have beaten death, and we don't have death in the camp. So you remove from the camp. In verse 22, the implication that anything can withstand fire, would all of those things that they accumulated would be melted down? That's what I was taking from this, Gary. They got a lot of animals from this, too. Yeah. As I was listening to it, I was like, whoa, yeah. the barbecue is going on there. A lot of hurting going on. Yeah, because they gave so many, and then so many went to God. So many were collected, and so many went to God. And that's what I'm thinking. Man, they were busy sacrificing. And they're, they're getting ready to set up the new, new uh, promised land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but it didn't say they went to God. Some went to the... Uh, Eliezer and some went to the Levites. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, that, that was just to repopulate their herds, I'm assuming, more than sacrificing mm -hmm. to God. But there were some. Because that's, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. much a detailed description so, of who goes or what gets what. Right. Like Leviticus, right? Girls. Where it says, you know. Well, it talks about here in Numbers also. So um, verse 30 tells us, From the Israelites' half, select one out of every fifty, whether people, cattle, donkeys, sheep, or other animals. Give them to the Levites, which is basically God's, God's share, because the Levites were his people, right. who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eliezer, the priests, did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now you notice that the soldiers paid less than the non-combatants because they had the possibility of losing their lives. So God says, this is part of my way of paying you, is that you give less of your booty. Um, well, but their portion went to Eliezer. Yes. Yeah, his family also. So he wouldn't have needed as much as the entire Levite True. clan would have. True. They could pay better than our soldiers. Huh. They're taken well, well care of. But I like the way they said they all returned. Yes. No Israelite died. And because God says, I will give, you, give them up to you. So God made that promise to the soldiers, even though the soldiers didn't expect it, that the, war, the battle wouldn't necessarily be easy, but they would come back. Uh, let's see here. That's uh, verses 49 and 50. We're told that... Uh, your servants have counted the soldiers under your, our command, and that one is missing. So the leaders were surprised. So we have brought as an offering to, of the, to the Lord the gold articles each of us acquired, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earnings, and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. So this wasn't a total plunge 
you know, where they kind of grabbed, they destroyed everything. They did not. They brought gold back. Mm -hmm. So it was a 50-50 division.